Hello and welcome. I'm very pleased to welcome Dennis Nickerson, who will be joining us at Festival of Durists in Zurich this year. Hello, Dennis. How are you today? Hello, Misa. I'm so excited to be in conversation with you and also to be present at the Festival of Doers. I've already started talking about it in my network and I really can't wait. I know it's going to be a fantastic day in Zurich. Brilliant. Um, to start, could you please share with our viewers a little bit about yourself, what you are passionate about and, and what you do? Sure. Um, I'm Denise Nickerson. I'm originally American, but I also became French. I have two daughters who are uh, 10 and 12 years old. I come from a background in fine art and academia, and I'm a writer. I wrote a book about international education in Switzerland. And I kind of grew into entrepreneurship and became a vocational psychologist along the way. My first business, I was alone. I had an educational consultancy for five years. And now in my current business, I have a business partner and we collaborate with lots of organizations. We have a boutique communications consultancy called SALT. Really exciting, thank you. Um, and how do you define success for yourself? So your personal definition, please. Well, what does success love, mean to you? I love this question. And um, I would love to make a rendezvous with you in 10 years. And let's ask each other the same question then. Because um, I've been on a, a lot of different journeys, traveling, studies, and changing careers in a, an evolving way. And my definition of success is always changing. Um, and now I know what I'm doing with that. I like to keep my definition of success just far ahead, and, uh, ahead of myself enough that I can see it, but I can't quite touch it. Yeah. If it's too far away, I get discouraged. And if I say, okay, well, I've achieved all those goals, then I lose my motivation. So right now, my, I am defining success in, in four major ways. The first is being in flow of energy exchange, which means really that great flow state where you're working and creating, but there's enough energy exchange that you're working with others and getting results and doing things and, and making something happen, getting some kind of, of result along the way. The second is about lifelong learning for me so that I'm always bringing others new learning, but that I'm also always learning myself because I get bored. So definitely energy exchange and flow and then lifelong learning. And then I have a personal mission for contribution and impact. Is this serving others in some way? Is this doing good in some way? Those are my questions. Sometimes those questions lead and that's caused a problem in my fourth area. So this is a, a really, the fourth area for me is the most important. It's about sustainability. And so that means sustainability in all ways, financial, energetic, spiritual, intellectual, and most importantly, sustainable relationships. Mm. And that means that as my success grows, the people who work for me, they're not getting burnt out. They're getting compensated yeah. and they have work-life balance and that I'm taking care of my wellness so that my energy is really high to serve others. And so that, those are my kind of key words. There's flow, learning, contribution, and sustainability. And that's my current definition of success. I hope that in 10 years, I'll rise above and have an even better one, but that's where yeah. I am right now. Oh, I love it. I have to say it's not very far away how I defined it. And uh, the fact that it's four, mm -hmm. there must be something because uh, one of uh, the core exercises when we start at Driven Woman, the, our journey is uh, we, what we call my life matrix. And you have mm -hmm. to define your four key words, your key life areas. <laughs> <laughs> so well done there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you got the number. <laughs> My success map right now. Yeah. Uh, right. So it, it looks all beautiful and serene uh, right now, but I'm sure there was a rougher journey uh, behind it. Could you share maybe maybe one experience, um, an obstacle, setback, failure from from the past? Yes, um, I, I can say that change is hard, and I have had to change. Uh, myself to become an entrepreneur and uh, and I made a I kind of discovered something to, that everybody needs to work on in this this first problem that that has come up with and that is it's been intellectual property so 
um, in my current business, my business partner and I have had like three or four major challenges with kind of people stealing intellectual property. And we weren't equipped or prepared to deal with them. So we've become experts. And then we thought, well, great, we've had all this pain, we have all this knowledge now, we can help people protect their intellectual property and their creativity and their vision and their writing. And we work with lots of writers and creative type people at, who had visionaries who don't think about that side of it as I didn't. I was naive and I believe people are good and, and all of that. And so I thought, okay, great, we're gonna, we're gonna teach people about IP but people aren't necessarily ready if they're in that creative space because it's facing something ugly and fear and, and all of this. And I dug a little deeper through this, this problem, which caused me anxiety and stress for a long time. So it's, it's not just a, oh, oops, somebody stole my idea. It was very deeply painful because it was confusing yeah. about what I was putting out in the world. And when I was digging deeper, I realized that it's not about IP, it's about self-worth and valuing your work. And so that's where we're starting when, when we go deep with clients is that if you really value what you're bringing to the world, your gift, then it's definitely worth the administrative hassle to protect it. And then suddenly IP makes more sense. And I find this especially with women not valuing what they're doing, not even being aware that they've created something good. So we have learned those lessons the hard way, and we're kind of experts on IP. We also found a very spiritual IP lawyer who is a woman, a fantastic woman who has 20 years experience in international law, and, and yet is on her own journey for, um, for ethical work. And, and so we have, uh, yeah, we've grown as entrepreneurs and pushed ourselves, and we take ourselves more seriously and our creations, and we help others to do the same. So that was, that's been one of the hardest things in the past three years. I, that is by far the best definition of, of IP I've ever heard. But it, you're so right. It so links to our self-worth. And yes. how, however, it's, it's, it's very, very hard for many women. And only the journey will build that confidence. Yes, I agree. So what, what would be your tip for somebody who is maybe looking for that confidence and doesn't, has, has ideas and has, has some sort of a vision that maybe I, I should start uh, taking a new route in my life, but is, is a little bit scared to get started. What is your top tip? to move forward oh i have to pick one um when i think about that feeling i had starting new projects or women that i've worked with um i think the most important one i have a few but i'll, I'll give you the very very important one and that one is uh, for me very freeing and that is to say to every single woman with any project no matter what it is is that the world needs your light. It's not about you, it's not about me, it's not about you, Misa, it's not about anybody's personality or ego. It's that the world is there and, and needs your talent, your solution, your creativity, your spark, your joy. So if you can, if you can set down the fear and say, well, yeah, I'm afraid and I don't want to put myself out there and I don't want to take the risk and say, well, but the world needs me. And so it's not about me. I, I can get up there before I'm ready. Um, that has served me. And that is something that I, I try to spread that news. It's, it's just the world needs your light, whatever this idea is, if it makes people smile, if it cures a disease, it needs to be there. We cannot, as women, let 50% of humankind's brain power, passion, and creativity sit at home in the dark. We've got to get out there and, and be a part of it because women can heal the world. I really, really believe that. Uh, I know it in my heart. Absolutely <laughs> to be true. And this is why we have Festival of Doers because we will be celebrating all of those ideas, all of the passion, and getting yes. over all of the obstacles and fears and everybody will be absolutely convinced that when they walk out of that seminar, that room that day, that they will have to go out, out to the world because the world needs them, needs their gift. I agree. And that's, that's what we are going to be looking at all day at Festival of Doers in Zurich on 14th of September. 
Can't oh, wait. Great. Can't wait to meet you there. And all I'm the other great. exciting, super fantastic, wonderful women and the whole tribe of doers who are well, going to be joining us. I can't wait to see you in person and, and to see everybody who's going to be there. Come along and we're going to have an amazing day. Thank you so much. Exactly. Thank you so much, Denise.